Welcome to episode one of the Euler Project. <laughs> in this series, we're going to be solving the problems in the Euler Project one by one using closure and test-driven development. And if the problems are simple enough and if we have time, we will push the limits of those problems and see where they lead us. The first problem in the Euler Project is a really simple one. It just asks us to find the sum of all the multiples of 3 and 5 that are less than a thousand. So, this doesn't sound hard, does it? So let's crank up a REPL and play around a bit. Well, let's start a REPL. There we go, here comes the REPL. And now, the um, multiples of 3. It begin at 3, and uh, they will go up to 1,000, not including 1,000, and they will increment by 3. Those are the multiples of 3. Yep, okay. And we could, um, we could create the sum of that, so that's just reduced plus of the range of 3, 1,003, right? That would be the sum of all the multiples of 3 less than 1,000. Hmm. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with um, 5. So let's just change that to a 5 there and change this to a 5. We should get the sum of all the multiples of 5. And of course, if we add those two together, 1, 6, 6, 8, 3, 3, and 9, 9, 5, 0, oh, oh, well, that will give us the sum of all the multiples of 5 and 3. Although that just sounds a little too simple, doesn't it? Let's, um, let's look at the multiples of 5. Yeah, so uh, range 5, 1,005, and there they are. And now let's compare the two lists, right? So we've got this list of all the multiples of 3, and we've got this list of all the multiples of 5. And do we see any numbers that are the same? And oh, we do. Look, there's a 15 there, and there's a 15 there. Well, we can't count that number twice, can we? <laughs> no, no. We must remove from this sum all of the multiples uh, of 3 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be the multiples of 15, wouldn't it? So, uh, here, let's do this. Let's say that we define M3 as range 3, 1,003. That'll give me all the multiples of 3. And let's uh, define M5. M5, Titan. M5. And let's uh, define M5 as the range. Oops the range of 5, 1,005. That's good. Okay, and now we're going to define the M15, uh, the multiples of 15, range 15, 1,015. I told I told a pretty cat. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's say, um, the sum of the multiples of 3 is reduced plus uh, m3. Good. And the uh, sum of the multiples of 5 is reduced plus m5. Good. And now uh, we're going to say the sum of the multiples of 15 uh, reduce plus uh, m15. Good. And now we're going to say minus plus, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, sum 3 and sum 5 minus the sum of 15. And that gives us this number 233168. And if you go to the Euler project and you plug that number in, <laughs> that is the right number. 233168. But 
we have not really written a program to calculate this. We've just kind of fiddled. <laughs> Now, there may be a better way. So, for example, let's take the multiples of 3 and 5 and put them into a set. Um, okay, so um, uh, how about this? Uh, reduce plus, we're going to add up the concat, the set, because <laughs> we're going to get rid of all the duplicates of the concat of uh, M3 and M5. Now that's 233168, oh, 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 oh. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Now that kind of is a program there. Not perfect, I suppose, but you can see how we would put it together, can't you? So here's the program that I wrote to solve that problem. It's pretty simple. It just computes the factors of 3 and 5 and puts them all into a set and then adds up all the numbers in the set. Voila! But that's kind of unsatisfying, isn't it? I mean, why are we limiting ourselves to just the multiples of 3 and 5? We should generalize this function. We should write a function that allows you to find the sum of any number of factors up to any arbitrary limit. For example, uh, I would like a function that would allow me to compute the sum of the multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11, all the way up to 10,000. So here are the tests for this function, and I, I sort of wrote them out of order. Um, you see the second test? Well, that's the degenerate test that I really should have written first. Sorry, Just, I, you know, I should have written that one first. Uh, you always do degenerate tests first, but okay. And then the last test you see there, well, that's the one I should have written second. Um, that's the one that adds up all the multiples of 1 uh, from 1 to 100. Uh, so all the integers from 1 to 100. And of course, everyone knows that the sum of the integers from 1 to 100 is 5,050, right? You knew that, right? So, okay. And then finally... The first test I wrote is the one that I really should have written last, and that's the one that makes sure that this function behaves the same way as the original function I wrote that just uh, added up the multiples of 3 and 5. <laughs> so, you know, out of order, but they're all there. As a fun aside, there's an interesting urban legend about the sum of the integers from 1 to 100 goes like this. Uh, when Gauss was a young boy at school, you know, the famous mathematician Gauss. <laughs> when Gauss was a young boy at school, his teacher asked the class to add up all the numbers from 1 to 100. And he uh, was going to give a prize to the student that uh, got there first, got the sum first. And, uh, Gauss got there very fast, and the uh, teacher didn't believe him and asked, asked him to show how he got there so fast. And Gauss did this. He said, well, look, if you take the numbers from 1 to 100, all the way up to 100, and then you just repeat them backwards, 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, all the way up to 1, well, then the sum of all of these is going to be 101, isn't it? <laughs> 101. And how many of those are there? Well, there's 100 of them. And so you multiply that by 100, and you get 10100, and then, of course, you've doubled everything here because you added all the numbers twice, and so you get 50-50. Oh, 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 that's so clever, isn't it? Anyway, the uh, solution that makes all the tests pass is the obvious extension of our 3 and 5 multiple solution. All we have to do is compute all the multiples, put them in a set to eliminate all the duplicates, and then add them all up. So here's the code, and it's pretty simple. I mean, we take the input list of factors, and we map that into a concatenated list of all the multiples of all those factors, and then we stick that into a set to eliminate the duplicates and add them all up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. You know, easy peasy.
And this passes all the tests. So we've done it. We've got our general algorithm. But there's a problem, and it's a big one. What if the limit we set is really, really big? So, for example, I mean, we could run the sum of multiples. <sighs> yeah. Um, uh, from 3, 5, 7, and 11 up to 1,000. And we get a nice little answer. Good. Okay. But let's do the same thing. But this time we'll run it up to uh, a million. <laughs> and, well, that takes a little bit of time. So let's find out how much time it does take. Uh, some multiples. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> of three, five, seven, and eleven. Um, up to a million. And that takes uh, half a second, uh, 400 milliseconds. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's make it uh, 10 million. And. Um, okay, it's going to take it some time. Okay, about five seconds. Well, gee, we ought to be able to calculate that much faster. I mean, summing up all those integers is just a big waste of time, isn't it? Gauss showed us how to speed this up, right? I mean, the, the sum of the multiples of 1 up to n is just n squared plus n over 2. That was Gauss's formula. And, well, if you want to take the multiples of x up to n, you just have to reduce the number of multiples. And so it's uh, n over x squared plus n over x divided by 2. And then multiply that by x. It's perfectly obvious. And this is where I got cocky. And I said to myself, ha, ah, this is going to be trivial. <laughs> and so I wrote the following test. So just look at the last two lines of this test and you'll get the gist of it. The, the rest of it is just a loop to run it a hundred times with a, a different bunch of variables and options. and You know, a real nice property-based test. And what you're going to notice, of course, is that I went for the gold. <laughs> How many times have I told you not to go for the gold when you're writing tests, right? Do everything around the outside first. Don't go for the gold. So what did I do? Well, I got all cocky and sure of myself, and I went for the gold. And I paid the price for it, too. I actually worked for an entire day on this, racking my brain, trying this, trying that, always certain that I was just one line of code away from the eventual solution. All it was going to take was one last clever idea. <laughs> Failing at every turn, of course. And so I went to bed, defeated. Alexa, Bob off. And when I awoke, I had a new plan. Gosh, I said to myself, what if I actually just took my own advice <laughs> and worked through the problem one simple test case at a time? So I got up and I went down to my office full of energy and confidence, determined to follow my plan and get to the bottom of this algorithm. And I started out with this test. And of course, making this test pass is trivial. It's just I'm using Gauss's formula, the one I just described to you, and made it pass right away.
The next test was just as simple, except for two factors, right? And to pass it, I used the uh, function that we wrote at the very start of this video. And then I added up the, uh, the sum of the multiples of 3 and 5, and I subtracted from that the sum of the multiples of 15. The code for this solution is similar to this. I mean, we get the... Uh, we get these, these subsets of the factors, 3 and 5, and of course those subsets are the set of 3, and then the set of 5, and then the set of 3 and 5. And then we uh, sum up the multiples of the singlets, 3 and 5, and add them together. And, and then we calculate the uh, sum of the multiples of the product of the doublet, the product of the pair, which is 15. And then we subtract that from the first sum, and that gives us the right answer. And, and okay, I get you. It's a little bit clunky, but I think you can see the beginnings of an interesting algorithm. I had learned a lot from the debacle of the previous day, so I knew that the product of the pair was not the right solution in every case. To check this out, I wrote the following property tests. And these just run a hundred tests, changing the arguments, and, and they're uh, one-factor tests and two-factor tests. And, and of course, the one-factor tests all passed. And as I expected, the two-factor tests all failed horribly. So here's the error output, and notice, uh, first of all, 13 and 7 passed. That's good. We're glad that 13 and 7 passed, but, but then you've got the next one, 18 and 1. Now, okay, I mean, 18 and 1 passed, but um, why in the devil would you be subtracting out all the multiples of 1? I mean, <laughs> every multiple of 18 is a multiple of 1, so... I think maybe we should probably be pulling out the redundant multiples, right? There's no real need to do that subtraction. Uh, 20 and 18 is an interesting one. 20 and 18 have, um, well, think about the very first multiple of 20 and 18 that ought to be subtracted. <laughs> that number is 180, not 20 times 18. Notice the wording there, right? It's the first common multiple, right? The first multiple common to both. And another way to say that is just the least common multiple. So maybe what we should be doing is not subtracting out the, the multiples, the sum of the multiples of the product of the pair. Maybe we should be subtracting out the sum of the multiples of the least common multiple of the pair. <laughs> and that gets us to the next one, which is, look at it here, it's, oh yeah, 14 and 2. Well, it's got the same problem, doesn't it? Because every multiple of 14 is also a multiple of 2, and the least common multiple is 2. So 14 is kind of redundant, isn't it? We need to get rid of these redundant factors. Yeah, maybe that's a lot to take in. I mean, there's a reason I lost a whole day on this thing. Anyway, the code that makes these tests pass is pretty straightforward. We start with the least common multiple. And as everyone knows, the least common multiple of two numbers is really just the greatest common denominator of those two numbers multiplied by the product of those two numbers. And then if you want the least common multiple of an array of numbers, it's just the reduction of the array through that least common multiple of two numbers function. Perfectly obvious. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. And here's the code that removes the redundant factors from the list. It's pretty straightforward. It's not very difficult. We, we just take every possible pair of those factors, and if the lesser is a factor of the greater, well, then we just eliminate the greater. Because obviously, if the lesser is a factor of the greater, then every multiple of the lesser is also a multiple of the greater. For example, Let's say that we've got the list, um, oh, 2, 4, and 5. 2, 4, and 5, right? Well, to remove the redundant uh, factors would leave us with just 2 and 5. 
because, of course, every multiple of 4 is also a multiple of 2. Right? So, redundant. Easy. Anyway, here's the algorithm that passes the, uh, the two-factor test. And, uh, the way it works is just to remove the, uh, the sum of the least common multiple of the pair rather than the product of the pair. No more smoke. Please don't blow smoke. So next comes the test for three factors. And as always, except when I'm being cocky and dumb, we will do the most degenerate or the simplest test. And in this case, the simplest test would be the first three prime numbers. And of course this fails, but it fails for an interesting reason. The result is too large by 75. Why 75? So let's draw this out. Right? I've got all the multiples of 2, 3, and 5 on the board here, and I've lined them up nicely. And uh, we could assume that we could add up all these numbers. If we just added up all these numbers, then clearly the sum we would get would be too large. And it would be too large because some of these multiples are repeated. So we're going to want to subtract out the repeated multiples. Now, uh, what are we going to subtract out? Well, we're going to subtract out 6 and 10 and 12 and 15 and 18 and 20 and 24 and 30. We're going to subtract those out. And those are just the multiples of 2 times 3 and 2 times 5 and 3 times 5, right? The multiples of 6, 10, and 15. So if we subtract out all those repeated multiples, well, it ought to work, right? Okay, uh, so let's begin by defining the sum of the multiples of 2 up to 30 to be some multiple up, up to uh, two, um, yeah, 2 and 30. There, that's, that's it. Okay, good. Uh, and SM, SM2 is 240. All right, good. Now let's define here. I bet I can do it. He's cheaper this way. Um, we want that to be a 3, and we want this to be SM of 3. Okay, that's fine. SM3 is uh, 165. And now let's do this with 5. Uh, yeah, okay. And SM5, that's good. And that's going to be uh, yeah, 105. All right, okay. So and if we add those together, we're going to get the... Um, let's define the sum of... Th two, three, and five <laughs> uh, as um, plus SM2 uh, and SM3 and SM5. Good. And uh, SM235 is 510. Okay. Now, now we want to subtract out the three, the, the three pairs, right? The three product pairs. So, um, uh, define uh, the sum of uh, 2 and 3 uh, as the uh, um, sum of the multiple <laughs> uh, uh, up to, and this is going to be 2 times 3 is 6 up to 30. Okay, good. And then let's do the next one which is going to be um, 2 times 5, okay, and that's going to be um, uh, 10, right, okay, um, isn't that right? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, and um, then we're going to do the last one, which is going to be um, 15, all right, that's going to be 15, and that's 3 times 5. Good, okay, and now what we should be able to do is say um, uh, subtract from uh, the sum of 2, 3, and 5, uh, sum of 2, 3, and sum of 2, 5, and sum of 3, 5, and that should give us our number, which is 3, 15. 
315 is not the right number. Let's see here. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, we expected 345. See there? 345. That's what we expected. But we got 315. So we're off by 30. Uh, why would that be? Why was our result too small by 30? <laughs> well, look at that. We subtracted 30 out twice. We subtracted out 30 because it was a multiple of 6. But we also subtracted out 30 because it was a multiple of 15. Well, that's no good. We need to add that 30 back in. Now, what is 30? Well, 30 is the least common multiple of 2, 3, and 5. So here's the code that passes the simple test of three factors. And you'll notice that it gathers all the pairs instead of just one pair. And, and it gathers all the triplets, even though we know there's only going to be one triplet. Uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> and then it takes the sum of that last triplet and it adds it back in to the difference between the sums of the singlets and the pairs. Are the little hairs on the back of your neck standing up? Maybe they should be, because there's an alternating pattern of addition and subtraction going on in there. But before we get to that, Let's look at the property tests for the three-factor solution. You can see this test just runs a hundred different combinations of different arguments, and, and they all pass. So that kind of tells us that our solution for three factors is working. So here's our solution, and you can tell that it needs an awful lot of refactoring here. There's a lot of similar code. Um, you can see that the... Uh, that the tests are passing down here. So let's let's see what we can do about refactoring this. Now, now the first thing that I notice is that the way that we're applying the um, the least common multiple is different in each of these three cases. This is where we're adding up the singlets, and this is where we're adding up the pairs, and this is where we're adding up the triplets. And each one of them applies the least common multiple in a slightly different way. Yeah, maybe you don't recognize that as the least common multiple of one element, but, you know, <laughs> that's what it is. So um, I wonder if I can just um, change this so that uh, this is uh, LCMV of, you know, the, the least common multiple of an array of two uh, as opposed to... Um, Using LCM, I can use LCMV. Let's see if that works. Uh, and uh, yes, that does work. And um, just for grins, let's see if we can do this. Uh, and see if that works. And uh, yes, that works. So now this code is even more similar than it was before. Um, and then I think we could probably bring these expressions you know, down here by inlining them. So let's let's try inlining, see if that works. And then I could probably inline that one and probably inline this one. And, you know, that should still work. Yeah, it still works. Well, now this is really similar. I don't know why that's purple. I mean, the IDE colors things purple sometimes. Don't know why exactly. But okay, fine. Now, <clears throat> it seems to me that the only difference between these stretches of code right here is that number. <laughs> That's it, right? So uh, I think we could probably take this entire thing out. Let's, let's select it properly. Okay, and um, I'll change that into a function and the name of that function is going to be um, sum of multiples of least common multiple of 
Um, Tuple. <laughs> Great name. Okay, Bob. Good name. Uh, and um, in this case, it's going to be um, one and subsets. I think that's what I have to pass in. So I'm going to pass in the the one and the subset. So uh, now what I want is to define that function. <laughs> Kind of a weird name, isn't it? So, um, fine, fine. Let's see. Um, Defin um, the sum of multiples of LCM tuple, and that's going to be um, the uh, uh, cardinality of the tuple and the subsets. Okay. And now the code for that is just. Oh, damn! It's what I had extracted, and then I lost my. Uh, my clipboard, but I can just do it from here. Okay, so um, the code for that is going to be this. Let's do that with it. And uh, I want to make this cardinality and that's subsets already, so that should be fine. And, and the word limit, oh yeah, limit's got to be in there. So uh, limit, let's put the limit in. All right, and that means we're going to need the limit here. Okay, and is that going to function or am I going to screw up? Nope, nope, that functions just fine. Well, okay. Then uh, I think this is going to be exactly the same thing. In fact, let me just get this. And I'll just make this exactly the same thing. Um, so I'm going to replace that with this, and that's going to be two, and I don't think I broke anything. Nope. And now I'm going to do this one and replace it with that, and that's going to be three. <laughs> and that, that does seem to work rather well, doesn't it? So, so this is pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> probably get rid of that blank line right there. Well, I could probably um, improve on this horrible structure here. Uh, maybe I should just do that. That's probably better. Um, hmm. And we can probably make this a little more readable by threading it. So let's use the threading operator like this. And we'll take the subsets and we'll just put the subsets right there. Okay, now we're going to run that through the filter. Let's make sure we get that just right. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay, I think this is going to work. Make sure that that parenthesis is balanced. So we'll take the subsets, we'll filter them by the cardinality. And then uh, having done that, we're going to map them. And we will map them by, let's get rid of this filter here now because I don't need that anymore. So get rid of that and let's join those lines. And then we're going to uh, select the map. So we should just be able to plop the map in here. And let's see, where did we, yeah, that's wrong. That one should be there. Good, okay, so the map is right. And then the rest of it is just reduce plus. So we should be able to say reduce plus. Uh, and that should end the thread and that should end that. And I don't need this anymore. And that should still work. And it does. Okay, so that's, that probably reads a lot better. If you look at this closely, you should see that there's an abstraction trying to get out, right? There's some simplification lurking in there. It's pretty clear that we can't continue this current pattern, right? Because to continue the current pattern, we'd have to add another line for four, and then another line for cardinality five, and then another line for cardinality six, and we'd never end it. So what is the abstraction that's lurking here? Well, I think you'll be able to see it better if I thread that last line as follows. <laughs> 
Now you can see that there's an interesting alternation of addition and subtraction, isn't there? Anyhow, let's try four factors. I've got a theory about how that's going to play out. Do you? Here's the four-factor test. It's nice and simple, like the ones before. It just uses uh, the first four prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, and 7. And of course, it fails. We expected it to fail. But oddly, it fails by 210. 210. That's um, 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, isn't it? And here's the solution that passes that test. And it passes all the property tests for four factors as well. It's pretty simple, really, just added two lines to deal with the quartet. But now that abstraction ought to be blazingly obvious. What we need to do is add all the odd cardinalities and subtract all the even cardinalities. So here's the final solution. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just uh, sum up the... Uh, the odd cardinality tuples, and then subtract out the sum of the even cardinality tuples. That's pretty much it. Of course, up there at the top, we had to remove the empty set from the list of subsets. And the timing, how fast are these two different functions? Well, the original function that we wrote would compute the, uh, the sum of the multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11 up to a million in about a half a second. And the fast one we wrote, well, that just took 212 microseconds. So there's a, a very clear difference between them. Our first algorithm had a complexity of big O of N, and the second one we wrote has a complexity of big O of 1. Lessons learned? One, <laughs> don't go for the gold. That one cost me a whole wasted day. Maybe it wasn't entirely wasted. I did learn a lot during that day. But at the end of the day, I had no idea what I was going to do. Two, it's just so easy to get cocky and drop your disciplines and hope that it pays off. It seldom does. Third, seemingly complicated problems can sometimes be reduced to almost absurd simplicity if you find the right abstractions. Four, finding the right abstraction can often be accomplished by the discipline of following a sequence of incrementally failing tests. One final note, what you saw here was a replay of the events that actually took place. It's slightly revisionist, although I did present the essential steps but I cleaned them up a little bit for presentation. <laughs> if you want to see and play with the code that I wrote here, well, you'll find it at the URL on the board here. In any case, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope maybe you learned something. And remember to subscribe and do all the things that YouTubers always say. And keep your code clean. Thank you.